Great. Well, I'm very happy to have been given the opportunity to share with you um, audiences um, attempt to uh, basically change the world of uh, hearing loss uh, to the better for the millions of people that today does not have a solution that they can either access or afford. So we are a, a Danish company that has been working on especially actually creating a solution that would be a really good fit for the Indian market for the past couple of years, partly subsidized by um, the Danish Market Development Fund, who has given us a, a generous grant to uh, test and, and, and develop the solution. Uh, and, and actually, we have been spending a good deal of time in Bangalore that, um, that uh, Jette talked about a few minutes ago. So my name is, as I said, Sting Tusen, and I've been with the company now for the past three years, and uh, we are really looking forward to um, into the Indian market this year. So what I've prepared is essentially a material that will share with you how we see the issue of poor hearing and how we are dealing with that. So let me see if I can change to the next slide. Yes. Um, what is the problem we are tackling? Well, it's a, it's a tremendously big problem. It affects uh, roughly half a billion people in the world today, according to the WHO. And getting towards 2050, this will affect literally a billion people in the world. So poor hearing, disabling hearing loss means that you cannot really hear anything that is going on in around a meter from you, even if people speak very loud. So in India, this is a problem that affects around 75 million people. So it's a really, really big challenge, even in a country of India's size. The challenge for the whole industry is that there's only around 16 million hearing aids being sold every year. And roughly around 45 million hearing aids is in use worldwide. So it means that there is hundreds of millions of people today that really does not have a solution at all. And even more, um, those who cannot afford the solutions on offer, they are even further away from having help for their hearing loss. So what this means to the individual, if you bear the sustainable development goals in mind, in our sort of interpretation, hearing loss and economic hardship really goes hand in hand. But by treating hearing loss for everyone, the door opens for a much better life and better living conditions in the form of, of jobs, economic independence, being able to interact with your, your fellow citizens and, and family and friends, and access to education and so much more. It also means that if you have a hearing loss, you are much more um, receptive to having what is basically called cognitive decline. Essentially, the brain does not really process sounds as it used to, which means that over time, people go into sort of a state that essentially can lead to early dementia, depression, and other conditions. And finally, poor hearing often results in exclusion from the labor market and society at large. But by treating hearing loss, it actually means that people get access to being part of their of the society and being able to interact with people again. And if we can provide a solution that doesn't uh, subject people to a stigmatization, it's even better. So the problem statement in a nutshell really is that millions of people around the world does not have a solution for the hearing loss because hearing aids generally are very expensive and there's a lack of audiologists and other people that can actually help people with the hearing loss. For example, in India, there's around one person for every half million citizens that can actually help people have a hearing aid fitted and even, you can say, um, intact with the individual on their hearing loss. So it means that there's a lot of people in the world, especially when you get outside the metro areas, there's a lot of people that will never get close to a hearing expert that can help them with a hearing loss. But if you get close to a hearing expert, it's still a costly and difficult fitting process because it's a very manual exercise. If you add the high cost of ownership of a hearing aid, both acquiring it and using it on an ongoing basis, it's essentially, it's a big challenge for a lot of people. So many people resort to cheaper solutions that we call sound amplifiers. The problem is they're not fitted to the individual's hearing profile, which means that they damage the person's hearing at the frequencies that they can actually hear quite well. So basically, we need a better solution. So what we have been working on is bringing to market what we call a self-fitting hearing aid that is accessible and affordable for the millions of people who suffer from disabling hearing loss. So we're doing that essentially in creating a hearing aid that doesn't really look like a hearing aid, but more as a smart headset. So we avoid the stigma. We build in essentially the notion of the whole hearing clinic the hearing test and the hearing fitting process into one device 
So when the person run the hearing test in the comfort of their own home, or for example, at a pharmacy or a optician, um, they basically get a hearing aid that is fitted in the matter of a few minutes, and then they can go on living their life and getting to basically talk to people and hear what they say in a much better way. It's also smartphone connected. So what does that mean? It means that we can also offer a user interface for the individual that is very easy to access. I just wanna make it clear that the hearing test is built into the product. So you do not need a smartphone to use and, and run the hearing test. But if you do have a smartphone, it's a much easier interface and you can get to access and navigate, uh, look at the hearing profile and adjust it further. It's also connected to what we call the cloud. So hearing data subject to regulatory um, conditions like the GDPR and so on, are basically uploaded to the cloud so we can actually understand how people are using the product. And as we get hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people using the, the product, we can actually understand a lot more about hearing loss around the world. We are focusing right now on India. India is our key launch market, but we have been really looking to broaden this solution to many more countries around the Asia and Oceania region from the outset, but also making the entry to the Americas region with the US uh, slated for actually late 2021 and with an FDA approved hearing aid in 2022. And the same with the, the EMEA region, we have quite a lot of interest from countries around Europe where there is also a big gap between people who has a hearing aid and people who want a hearing aid. Just to really to explain who are the persons that we are targeting initially, well, we have a product that can help really anyone with hearing loss, but we are looking for really addressing the middle-class customers in India who can afford a product that would cost around 80, 18,000 uh, rupees, around uh, $220 and so on. That's the region we're looking to, to enter the market with a product and essentially addressing a number of what we call personas across the spectrum from the pensioner who has age-related hearing loss, who needs a hearing aid, or the military veteran who has hearing loss and wants something that is smarter than what is currently on offer. And of course, the whole spectrum of individuals in between. A few words on the COVID-19 situation. We actually have a solution that can help a lot of people that today are prevented from accessing a hearing clinic. So that's why we have been really focused on accelerating our road to market with this offering. And uh, we really hope that we can benefit a lot of people uh, who are currently prevented from accessing hearing assistance uh, at the clinics that are often under lockdown. Just really to briefly explain, we are going to market um, with a sort of classic distribution channels, distribution partners and retail partners in the countries we are uh, offering the solution in. But we're also going to do it online and for example in India on Flipkart and um, India Mart and, and so forth and Amazon of course. So the next step for us really is that we are in the test and pilot phase and we'll be testing the next version of the prototype uh, offering in, uh, in India this month in, in December, and we'll be continuing the work to complete it and offer it for the market later on uh, in 2021. Just the sort of final words about our company. We are, uh, we are a, a, an early stage company, but we are traded at the NASDAQ First North Growth Market in Denmark. And uh, if anyone is interested in more information, I'll be delighted to interact with you either uh, by mail or by, by telephone. So, just really thank you very much for the opportunity to, to share about our audiences and um, have a, a great session going forward. Thank you.